All right, so game was four, and I'm versing Gary from WA, man. How are you going? So, take us through uh, Army, the tiny little army at the moment. Say again? I was going to say, just take us through it. So, Got, um, what is it, a bunch of uh, Cody is and his warrior acolytes, <laughs> and henchmen, and three grey knight dreadnoughts, yeah. and a auto molasses inquisitor, three plasma gun servitor, cannon servitors, three warrior acolytes with plasma guns, and two jacaro. And then reserve is a whole bunch of storm ravens. Storm ravens and assassins and crusaders. Excellent, excellent. Um, and I've gone and hid in the corner like a good tyrannid I am. And that's the map. Alright. Alright, so even though I say in the intro this is game four, it's actually game five, because I can count. Um, and this this game, it, it's it's interesting. I've got <laughs> there's that little cord in the front of the camera, awesome. Um, I'm versing tons of Storm Raven. So I actually got to got to practice with a Storm Raven list um, and one of my teammates, Wes, he runs he ran Storm Ravens as well. And so I had a, a pretty good idea of what I needed to do, which was just the nice base. So I positioned myself in that way. Um, I got my two turvagons in the back, just making babies. And that's pretty much it. And I've got the bodyguards of the Tyrannifexes in front. And I'm just going to be sending tons of gaunts forward. Um, I He gave me first turn very, very cleverly. And I was so worried about him seizing and killing my crones because it was no night fight and it was very very hard to defend because he placed the sky shield really cleverly in the middle and then he's got the um Daka dreads and you know we're playing draw hammer so one objective each him getting first blood was a big big thing and i didn't really want to risk him seizing he's got Kodia, so it's you know two out of six chance of him seizing um so i took the risk i didn't seize, and I'll just hope that I wouldn't get too many of my crones out on turn one, on turn my turn two. Um, and I'm trying to get um, first blood. So I've shot two turns worth of rupture cannons at one of his um, dreadnoughts, and then I shoot four haywire missiles at that same dreadnought, and I get I only kill I cause one hull point worth of damage out of all of that. He made a lot of cover saves. And this is what I mean by Sky Shield being a little bit too powerful, I think. Because it gives 4 plus and vulnerable, the other stuff gives 3 plus cover, and then you've got an objective straight underneath it, which you can hold from standing on top. Um, and I guess this is why people brought it, but I just, I think it's pretty damn powerful, and there's no way of countering it. I think in 7th edition you can actually blow it up, which would be great. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll, it's something to think about. Maybe if I had at least one squad of Bibles or something like that, I was, my list is pretty, pretty, um, was it, min-maxed in that I don't have any upgrades on anything. <laughs> I, I got no sp spots for points. And anyway, you can see here, I'm playing the effective area denial. Um, by the end of the game, I actually had to go and get my, another 50 Gaunts because I've, I've spawned. Um, so I started with 60 and I had up to 120 at, at one time on the board. Um, so that means I spawned, you know, 60 guys. It was, it was a bit, just over 60 guys, um, which was awesome. And by the end of the game, one of the Turvagons was still spawning, which is <laughs> insane in my opinion. Um, I'm just making it so he can't, um, get too close to my Turvagons because that's the real weakness, a weak point in my army, if you can kill the Turvagons, um, it's not good. I also have done something I thought was really clever, and my, um, Hayden, from my, the captain, um, he showed me this, where you put the, um, what's it called, units one inch away from the base of a flyer, it means he can't turn, and he has to fly forward. Now, he could meet, he could make it to the edge of the board going straight and go back into reserves but it um, or he could go into hover mode but it just meant that if he was a bit further back he would actually get destroyed or be forced to go into hover mode which would have been really good uh, my last hive crone that did fly on it actually got um, a kill so it killed one of the storm ravens which was great and all but one of the cultists survive and 
I probably should have turned around the flames of that cultist rather than gone for um, the Jokera because I didn't realize that his 3 plus invulnerable guard dude was in the front. Um, and just to get some more points because this game apparently, because I think we got a draw overall round against Western Australia. We, um, if I kill that point, maybe I got one bonus point. I don't know. It was very, very, very close. I, he killed some of mine, he killed three of my crones, a whole bunch of gaunts and one turvagon. I killed one storm raven, half a dreadnought, and half a unit of things. Not much died, it was just very, it was a very uh, technical game, in my opinion, for, for, on, from my behalf. Because for me, my whole goal was getting a line breaker, spawning a whole bunch of stuff, and going for the draw. Once, once I had lost first blood, one, I, I tried everything to get that first blood. If I had gotten first blood, I would have gotten the win. I didn't. So I said, fuck it, I'm going for a draw. Um, and that's what I did. Get line breaker, hold an objective, don't lose my warlord. Make sure he doesn't get line breaker. He has his objective, he got first blood, he was pushing for my warlord, and that was it. I got a draw at the end. Alright, turn five. Look at this. Six inches. So I can fire all weapons? Yep, no, I don't. Swarm of gorns. 